Hi everyone, welcome to WW Designs. My name is Nikki, and last week I had a once in a lifetime experience. I swam with whales. Now, I have already journaled about it in my daily journal, but we have a local magazine that comes out here in the Sunshine Coast, and this was on the cover. And I just fell in love with this image and decided I needed to do another journal spread, including this image. So what I'm going to do is I have grabbed my magazine art journal. I have a video on how I made this journal just using magazines, and it is the perfect size to do a spread just remembering this absolutely remarkable day, which I will tell you about while I'm creating the page. So what I'll do is we're going to do some journaling and I will do a voiceover and I will explain what I'm doing journal wise and also tell you some of the amazing things that happened on my adventure. So grab yourself a cup of tea or coffee, get comfortable and let's do some crafting. So I'm going to use a double spread to do this one because my whale cup is so big and we've got lots of colour and lots of stuff at the back here. So I have went through my stash and I found things that had blue in it and sort of represented water just to tone it all down and give myself a more suitable background to do an ocean themed page. So while I'm happily gluing away here, um, I live on the Sunshine Coast in Australia and every winter whale watching tours are very popular because the humpback whales migrate north from Antarctica to have their babies. When humpback whale babies are born, they have absolutely no blubber. So if they were born down in Antarctica, they would freeze instantly. So the humpback whales do a 10,000 kilometre round trip to come up to our warmer waters because where I am, we're subtropical. So not super hot. It still gets chilly in winter, but for them, it feels like summer. So they come up, they don't eat for the entire journey. They stuff themselves full before they leave home and up they come. And every day during whale season, you will see boats going out everywhere trying to capture a glimpse of these whales. Now, there is a company that does something a little bit differently and they leave from Mooloola Bar and you can swim with the whales, providing everything works out right. Now, I did try and do this tour last year, but unfortunately, a lady that was with us on the trip after about two hours of us hunting for whales, that's not the right word to use, looking for whales and then spending time with them before contemplating going in the water, um, she got violently ill from some anti-nausea meds that she had never taken before. So we had to return to the shore. And we were given the chance to come and do this trip free of charge next year. So we booked in last Friday and I had my fingers crossed. It took us about half an hour to find our first pod of whales. There was three of them together, no babies. It was three adult whales and we followed them for a while then just sort of turned the engines off, drifted with them for a little while. We got into the water, but we did not see them. They decided to swing away from us. So what that means is they just weren't interested in playing with us humans. So back on board we get. Now, keeping in mind, we all have wetsuits on and we have fins and snorkels and masks. So it's all good, but off we go on a hunt again. So we see quite a few whales a long way off in the distance. We saw some fabulous breaching where they jump right out of the water. We saw fins waving at us and a few tails. And then we found what we thought was another pod of just mum and bub. But 
we now realise that's actually never how things go. Now, I better just quickly tell you what I'm doing here. I have got my brayer out and some acrylic paint and I didn't want full coverage of this paint. I wanted some of the imagery to come through. So I've just grabbed three different tones of blue and I will just be covering this up and because I tried putting the cup and whale on top of just all this white and it sort of got lost. I realized I needed something a bit darker. So out with the paint we go. So we uh, find what we thought was just mum and bub and we turned the engines off and we were just sort of watching her for a little while. And mum brought her brand new baby right up to our boat to say hello and we know that Bubby was very new because it was still quite white it only had a little bit of grey on it so when they're born they're white and then every day they get greyer and greyer so we knew Bubby was very new and we could not believe that honestly I was no more than five meters away from a baby and mother humpback whale that was already enough like if nothing else happened on that trip, I would have been very happy. And I'm sorry, tearing up a bit, it was truly the most wonderful thing. So um, she swims on by and the captain of our ship, he's done this trip many a time. He said, guys, hurry up. We are going back in the water. So, okay, we gear all up again, um, fins on, snorkels, and into the water we go. So mum and bub decide to swim on by. At the same time, we have three dolphins that have come along for the ride. Apparently, dolphins are often found near humpback whales. They have learnt that mum's food that she provides for her baby, it's very much like, apparently it looks like a big thick yoghurt full of nutrition for Bubby, dolphins like to try and get leftover bits if possible because they know how good it is for them. So we had some dolphins in the mix. Then what we didn't realise that another whale appeared and this whale is what they call an auntie whale. It's usually a female and often mum and bub will have an auntie whale that is with them and she helps protect the baby. So that's exactly what happened. This whale that we didn't realise was there came and swam right in between us, as in us all in the water. There was 15 of us and mummy and bubby because she was doing her protective thing and she was yelling at us a little bit as she breached out of the water a bit and blew her air out and that's where you get those lovely spurts she made it very clear she was not happy that we were there and two guys on board actually got hit by this whale <laughs> now one of them just got a very light tap the other one got a real whack he's okay um, but I, he, I think he was definitely going to have to go to hospital to have an x-ray done and make sure he hasn't cracked a rib or anything like that when when it was all over we saw him actually walk away to his car so he was not very sick but still you need to check that everything's okay so what i've done here i've got my whale cup and i have folded it because i want an actual fold in the join where the paper folds over but i wanted it in between the whale body and the whale tail of this cup. I didn't want to try and fold the tail over. So here I am, I've just got my favourite glue, which of course is Helmer Tiger Grip that I use for any heavy duty paper. And I don't need to add a lot, but I'm just trying to make sure I get semi-decent coverage. And because this is a very thick cardboard from a cover it's like pretty heavy duty there's no way I'd only be using glue sticks so we'll stick down one side first which is of course what I'm doing here and then of course we'll do the other side so um it was an incredibly 
exciting. Probably we had about, we think about four minutes in the water. It all just went so fast. And we have, uh, we were chatting to one of the other passengers on board and they have a GoPro. So they had that with them and they very kindly sent us some of the footage that they took whilst we were underwater so that we could actually see how close the whales were with the people and the dolphins and everything there was just so much going on that i don't know it's very hard to explain it it was quite a, well it was a very unique experience and as the captain said to us when we got back on board I know I rushed you into the water, but he said, I knew that you were going to have a once in a lifetime experience. He said, I've never seen a whale allow us to go in that close without diverting. So he said, this is probably not her first bub. It's quite possible this is her second or third or maybe even fourth. They only breed every two years. And he said it was obvious that mum was perfectly comfortable introducing us to bub. He said, I didn't want you to miss the opportunity to go into the water with them. So that's what we did. So needless to say, I had to go through all my stash. I needed a picture of dolphins to include in this spread because dolphins, of course, are one of my favourite animals and mammals, whatever they are, always get that wrong. I think they're mammals. Um, I definitely had to have some dolphins included in this spread. Now, I didn't fussy cut them out. I just cut around them. I thought, it's fine. I I didn't want to ruin them by any chance because it was the only picture I could find. So I thought, that's fine. Different tones, who cares? But at least I have some dolphins to remember that they came and played with us. Um, they disappeared by the time we got back on board and turned the engines back on. Unfortunately, I was hoping they'd come and play with us, but I think they were more interested in following mum along. So that's okay, all good. At least we got to see some really close up, which was very, very exciting. So the next thing I found was this picture of a lady in the water and she's quite small, but in comparison to the size of whales, that's exactly what we are. We are we're tiny. So I did exactly the same thing, didn't try and fussy cut her out, left the water around her, and she to me is the perfect representation of a small human playing in a giant ocean with a giant whale or three. So I had to include that in my spread. Uh, with this, I'm just using my glue stick. That's I've got my little scrap paper over to the left there and I'm just glue sticking down. Then the next thing we're going to add, um, keeping in mind, usually in southeast Queensland, our winter days are sunny, usually quite warm. We get very little rain, but this was this season has been very different. And honestly, we had weeks of grey sky and rain so this little hello sunshine was absolutely appropriate for our day we had the bluest of skies we had calm ocean there was a swell but not uncomfortable there was virtually no white cap it was it was a delightful day and we could not believe how lucky we were that we got a lovely sunny day so I just had to include that hello sunshine and then the last little bit I've decided to add, I, I wanted to somehow put the date on it and I couldn't quite work out what to do. So I grabbed this little scrap of paper. It's, um, oh no, hang on a minute. Can we backtrack there? I forgot. I was looking at this spread, thinking about the date, and I realised that the sky and the water had sort of really become one. Not so much on the left-hand side because you could still see that cut-out shape. So I decided we needed to maybe just put some shimmer on the top of the waves to truly reflect how delightful the water looked that day. So I'm using this light blue shimmer paint, which is lovely and thick, so it's really pretty good for using with stencils um, and I, I put it on as you can see with my little um, 
spatula thing there mm-hmm. because it's quite thick. It works really well. And you, if you gently lift it up, as you can see, mm-hmm. you do get nice defined mm-hmm. marks. So I thought some shimmering waves. Mm-hmm. And, of course, we have to do the same thing mm-hmm. on the other side. Mm-hmm. So back to my little story. Mm-hmm. Um we then continued on our trip because we'd only been out there for, oh, we'd been out for two and a half, almost three hours. We found a few more pods um, and we watched them play and jumping out of the water and waving at us. But we decided not to follow them and try and go back into the water. I think we were all quite flabbergasted, quite stunned of what we had done and we ended up going back. Uh, we were supposed to be out there for about four hours. We went back a bit early and not a single person complained. I, I think we all knew how lucky we were and that we didn't really need to tempt fate and um, go through any of that again. So here's my little scrap. And I had some holographic um, letters on a mermaid pad that I've had in my stash forever. And I then just hand wrote the date of the 12 July 2024 because I didn't have any numbers left in these letters and I didn't want it too big but I just wanted to include the date. So it's just a little scrap and a bit of hollow there because, yes, well, it was a very sparkly day. So, look, I hope you enjoyed this. If you ever get the chance to do something like a swim with whales, do it. You don't have to be a fabulous swimmer. You don't actually go diving under the water. You stay on top. They have float devices for people that are really unsure of the water. Honestly, or go whale watching. If you live in Australia, plan to come to Southeast Queensland next winter and play with the whales. Honestly, you cannot beat it. Hope you enjoyed this. If you've got any questions, pop them down in the comments box below. And thank you so much for sharing this with me.